Hello and welcome back to my channel. One of the few occasions uh, that I will be doing a video again and uh, publish something here on this YouTube channel. The situation that I'm in hasn't changed. I'm currently not really very active and uh, has uh, so many other things, unfortunately not very nice things, that keep me from doing my hobby uh, the way I uh, used to. But uh, since we are now with Sim Update 9, uh, once again, <laughs> I don't know, how is it with you? But with Explain and Prepared, updating the system has never been a real problem or something that I was dreading. Because somehow uh, updating Explain is very, very easy and fast. And updating prepared, okay, yeah, you had to do a couple of things. You had to download something, then you installed it. Then you crossed your fingers and, yeah, it was usually okay. Microsoft Flight Simulator <laughs> gives me the creeps. Whenever I know that a sim update is upcoming, um, yeah, usually I'm not a happy camper. Uh, when this comes and usually after the updates I regularly uh, have high blood pressure <laughs> because let's face it um, they go three steps forward and at least one step backward with every update uh, I know eventually this will all be great and fine and we will have the greatest simulator in the world but at the moment it's just one stumble stone after the other um, Sim Update 9 is no exception. I heard already that it uh, breaks a couple of add-ons and the developers are not very happy about that because they just issued something like the Concorde and then they have to go and, and fix it again because uh, Azobo Microsoft decided to do something different. Um, I'm not sure how that will influence the PMDG release date. Um, yeah, we, we shall see. Fact is that after updating FS2020, you usually have to update a lot of your add-ons uh, as well. Uh, usually the aircraft, but also some tools because they might not work afterwards because of some improvements. I know, it's uh, one of the worst things about this simulator, apart from the viewing system. Uh, which which I really which actually keeps me from using it because not only uh, do I waste a lot of time but they do change settings um, and very often it was like that in Sim Update eight and uh, I understand that Sim Update nine is the same thing after a Sim update chances are that your performance uh, goes down sometimes abysmally I had that after Sim Update eight. And uh, that's why I'm going to describe to you now what I usually do uh, and to, uh, when, when an update comes up and why I'm doing things. So the first thing I do before I put in an update uh, is that I back up all the known to me files uh, or folders of uh, Microsoft. Now, I haven't uh, installed Microsoft in the usual places because they are hidden somewhere in the C drive. Uh, the C drive is just a, a small SSD here on this PC, which is meant to just house the, the operating system and some, some utility programs. Uh, it's not meant to uh, be a simulator hard drive and therefore I made sure that I install my simulator on a separate it's a it's a Evo um, SSD drive with one terabyte it's directly on the M2 bus so it should be relatively fast um, hard drive basically or a, a virtual hard drive as uh, an SSD and uh, what the program does is it stores two folders. No, not hang on, not the program files. The MF, MSFS package, that's the community folder, the famous one, the model matching magic. I'm not sure where that comes from. I think that's from the vPilot. 
and uh, yeah, and the official folder. Now, in the official folder, you have everything that the Zobo gives you, and also all the updates of the packages that go into this folder. Now, official, uh, as I say, it depends a little bit on how you install it. Uh, and it also depends whether it's from Steam or from the DVD, as in my case, or if it comes from the Microsoft Store. So there are subtle differences. Um, using the DVD allowed me to be relatively flexible, but it also means that, uh, um, yeah, if I if I ever lose my my simulator for some reason, I would have to first install everything from the DVD, which took quite long. And it actually requires you to have a DVD drive. Otherwise, you will not see the end of it. Or is it, okay? is it yeah, I think it was a DVD, right? Mm, not sure. Uh, maybe it was also Blu-ray. Huh. I'll have to check that. Um, anyway, it takes quite a long time to get all that stuff uh, installed. And then comes the real issue, and that is the update. Because the DVD is stone old. And all the updated uh, packages, you basically replace, after you install the DVD, you replace the whole crap. <laughs> Downloading hundreds of gigabytes, probably, um, with, uh, if you're unlucky, with not exactly high speed. And that can be a real issue. So should I ever lose MSFS uh, on my hard drive, uh, for me, that would have been the end because I wouldn't have had the time and the, and the energy to go through all this. Uh, so what I do is, although it isn't really uh, serving the same purpose as with other simulators, other simulators I back up because I can go back. That's the idea of back up, okay? Uh, with Microsoft Flight Simulator, if you back up the current state before you do an update, and you have to replace it again with that state, it's not like you're going back, no. The only thing that allows you to do is not having to install the whole thing from DVD or from Steam again and download hundreds of gigabytes, but uh, it allows you to bring it into the state that it was before the update, and then you have to run the update again. Now, lucky enough, Azobo and Microsoft have finally realized that doing 35 and 40 gigabyte updates with speeds of something like 5 Mbit or something, it took me days to get things updated. It was, it was the greatest pain under the sun, um, and it almost made me throw away Flight Simulator because I was so fed up with this. It took me partially a week because I'm not running through the night and stuff like that. I turn things off. I don't leave uh, computers running for days just to up to install an update. Um, so what I do is I do a complete copy of the MSFS package folder and the community and so on. Um, and uh, that's on, a, on an external hard drive. So should I ever lose it? I can restore it and then I can run the, the update. And because updates are not as big and as, as uh, slow anymore, unless something happens, like I will describe to you in a moment, <laughs> um, it's actually okay. Yeah? So with limited time investment, I can hopefully get back to the state that I used to be. So that's why I do a complete backup. The other thing I do is I almost empty. Um, I, I, you could empty your community folder. Actually, you should probably remove all your add-ons from the community folder. I know now by experience that these here are not affected normally, so uh, I haven't placed them somewhere else. But what I do use, I use the... Um, Hang on, let me show you that tool. I use this great tool. It's a freeware tool. You get it on flightsim.to. And it allows me to bring all my add-ons from different sources, for example, the FS Dream Team, uh, MSFS uh, sceneries, the Orbic stuff that I have, um, 
all the downloaded scenery, be it payware, be it uh, freeware, a lot of it, most of it is actually freeware, which is also quite great in, in Flight Simulator 2020. The tools, which is kind of plugins, as, as we would call them in, in X-Plane, uh, and other tools, and obviously the aircraft. We don't have that much in FS2020 yet, so there's the flyby wire, there's the Salty 747, there's the, um, the CRJ, no, no, what, CJ4 from working title. So there are a number of uh, free and also payware add-ons, uh, add like the payware add-ons are the Microsoft, uh, the Aerosoft uh, CRJ. Um, and we are now getting quite a few new ones uh, upcoming as a Concorde. There, is, uh, there are a number of old, like I call them, clock shop uh, aircraft because they are the easiest to convert from the old FSX or prepared. So there's this kind of uh, revival of many of the add-ons we've seen in, in the old days, which is okay. I mean, you don't have to buy everything. So you, you just get yourself that, what you want. Anyway, I use this tool because what it does is it creates these hard uh, uh, links. Um, in, it doesn't copy the files here, it creates links. And uh, what you can do is if you turn on, for example, let's go and turn on Lorby, Lorby SI, which is the, um, the, the tool that you can do Lorby's axis and O. You can define buttons, you can define axis outside. Actually, Lorby axis and O is quite, a, quite an interesting tool. If I would have more time, I would go much deeper than I do at the moment. It allows you to do even programming and things like that. So eventually I will have a closer look and really try and do some of the things I'm used to be able to do in prepared and, and especially in X-Plane, uh, also hopefully in MSFS. But as you can see, it creates links. It doesn't copy the content, it creates links. That means you can spread your files over a number of other this, it doesn't have to be one, yeah? You can, you can spread the stuff, uh, you can put your sceneries on a different uh, hard drive, then you can put your, your aircraft, whatever. With this tool, you just have to define where are the sources, and then you can select them. You can create profiles, that means you can say, give me all German airports, and that profile will then load all the German airports from all the locations uh, and put it here as links. And as soon as you start FS2020, you will have uh, those add-ons. But when you do an update, it happened several times that the community folder had been cleared. And if you do not have a backup of your files or have them somewhere else, that might be a bit of a problem, obviously, because then you have to go and install them again, um, get them again, depending on what the situation is. Okay. So use something like FS add-on linker or just generally move out um, stuff from the community folder. You could even rename your community folder. It will create a, an empty one uh, and then rename it again, uh, like call it X community before you, before you start your simulator and start the update. Okay, so backup. By the way, for backup, I use a tool called Free File Sync. I'll just show you that because the thing is, this is a lot of stuff that it copies. And uh, here, you, what you can do is you can uh, create folders. Uh, I do all my simulators um, are backed up with this tool to external drives. And what it does is it compares two folders on the hard drive and on the external drive, and it matches them. And then you can tell synchronize mirroring, meaning everything that is on my simulator drives will be mirrored exactly like that on the external drive in that in that uh, folder like the P3, p3d tools i run with prepared explain and msfs 2020 on the same disk okay so just to show you and uh, this is by the way my simulator disk so i have everything here i have my whole my explain installation i have my uh, lockheed martin prepared installation here and i have my um, my FS2020, including the cache, which I have now reduced drastically because I had 100 gigabytes of cache and I realized that you don't need that, at least not the way I fly. 
So 10 gigabytes at the moment is, is the cache I'm using. What does it do? The rolling cache basically loads stuff like scenery and things from the, from the servers. And instead of always having to reload them, and it will actually dump them here in this, in this special file. It's actually a file. And uh, that means if you are flying mainly in the same area, uh, then it doesn't need to go on the, on the internet and uh, load stuff again and again. So if, if you're flying, let's say, in Bavaria, um, like I do my, my um, try and flies, and they are between Stuttgart and Munich, um, and that's almost what I'm doing at the moment. There's not that much other things that I do. Uh, that's um, more than enough uh, cash. Should I think of being a bit more um, dynamic and having several areas there where I would go fly in again, then you can always increase this to a bit more. Okay. Um, but that's all on this hard drive and it leaves enough space. But I'm not putting sceneries and stuff. That goes on other hard drives and we use the kind of hard link uh, concept, not only, by the way, for MFS 2020, I use this for uh, explain as well and for prepared. But that's a different story. So this is the preparation backup before I start uh, with the update. Right, now you have updated your simulator. You finally are able to get in. Um, there are some things that you must check immediately and you have to also make sure that these settings are uh, kept and correct uh, because don't ask me why I had this now in sim update 8 it started changing my settings and I have a feeling that some of my settings are not persisted because they keep being changed don't ask me how that comes I have no idea I just seem to have an issue with settings and one setting that is really hampering me is this vsync it's supposed to be off for me because i don't have uh, the correct um, setup here and i don't have uh, powerful um, hardware so vsync actually makes my simulator slow the way i understood it is reading up on it um, if you set vsync on and you have a, f a frame rate like 60 fps set up like this here what it will do is, it will synchronize, um, the VSync will synchronize with your screen. So if, ah, and here's another of these things that I have now uh, for quite some time. Now, VSync will try and achieve the 60 frames if, as my hardware um, is, uh, you cannot achieve this, it will half the frame rate to 30. And if for some reasons you're not able to reach 30, it will go down further. So what happened was, um, I tested the, uh, the headwind, uh, is it called headwind A330-900, and I used external windows because otherwise it's very hard to read the displays, and I ended up with 10 FPS. And by the life of me, I changed settings like mad here, I brought them all down to the lowest. There was no way I was not able to get over those 10, 15 frames per second. That was after SIM update 8. And uh, I realized they had turned VSync on. All right? So make sure that after your update, go to the settings and make sure that those critical ones, critical settings, are actually turned off. And the other thing you should do is uh, go to the data. Uh, so you can see I currently use 7.5. 5-7 gigabytes. Now it is quite important that you get this uh, the rolling cache uh, deleted. So delete rolling cache file and make it empty again. All right. So there is no data limitation. That's important. And also this actually was something that made me mad just a couple of days ago, because Sim Update 9 had four gigabytes of files. It took me six hours to get that installed. Why? Because it was 
downloading with 2 m mbit per second. It was slower than it ever had been on this simulator. And I was really, I, I was getting completely mad because I didn't understand where that came from. So I checked my internet, I checked everything. I used a network cable. Nothing that I did changed this. Why? Because, and don't ask me why, this thing was set to 5 Mbit. And if it's set here, it will also apply to your, to your update bandwidth usage. And you cannot change it because once you're in this update mode, the simulator lets you not do anything. So I had to wait six hours to get four flipping gigabytes downloaded. By the life of me, I don't understand why things have to be like this in this simulator. Now, why am I not using unlimited? Well, it's very simple because I'm a streamer and uh, I limit it to 20 Mbit because that is a reasonable um, the data rate, um, also for the update, um, and it makes sure that the simulator is not eating up all the bandwidth uh, of my, my internet, because I just want to make sure that, uh, that uh, yeah, I have enough uh, bandwidth for the streaming as well as the um, downloads here of this. Yes, I can vamp this up and if I'm not streaming I could actually put it on unlimited and uh, suck everything from the internet. It probably would uh, improve certain things, certain aspects of it, especially when it's loading stuff. But yeah, 20 megabit is my setting and I was happy with it. And for some reason this was set to 5. Okay, let's hope they will not do that again. <laughs> Yeah, and don't forget to delete the rolling cache. Why should you delete the rolling cache? Um, well, very simple. If you, um, it, it, it's, it's loading stuff in the cache that might still be like after the, the sim update eight sort of level of stuff. And when they make changes, what can happen is that these changes are counteracted by what you have in your cache. Okay, so you could actually experience not so good performance or maybe some other issues because it's whole it's, it's getting stuff from the cache instead of loading it uh, from the disk where it just had been updated so that's why you should always delete the cache at least that's what i was uh, told and that's what i do okay that's the two things you should do after the update make sure that your settings are still okay and then uh, delete the rolling cache now, let's uh, look at uh, how to improve the performance. And the performance is something that's always, yeah, it's ups and downs. There are updates that improve performance. Apparently, Sim Update 9 seems to reduce performance again by a certain degree. So it is important that you get yourself on your system with your graphic card, and that's important. There is no recipe, yeah, there's only some, some ideas and I'm going to try those out now. Um, what can be done in order to improve things as much as possible? There's a very good video out from uh, Q8 Pilot. Uh, he has done his own optimizations. Now, his 70 frames and more, <laughs> he has a monster of a machine. Um, but even with a monster of a machine, you can see how certain settings and, and certain circumstances on your rig can influence performance. So although he might be in a frame rate range that I wouldn't even bother to optimize, <laughs> at least me, yeah, um, it still shows that there are things that could be improved. And I will go through some of his settings and I will also test uh, my own settings. Now, the first thing that he suggests, by the way, is that you find yourself uh, the setting game mode, game mode settings. Um, not sure what that is in German, and make sure that this is off. It was off uh, for me anyway, so there's nothing that I have to change. And then look for graphics settings, um, graphic einstellung, I don't know. And here he says, very important, turn hardware 
accelerated GPU scheduling off because it seems that uh, Windows might be interfering with your graphic card. So they, he says to turn this off. Thing is now I have to restart my PC. I just watched his video. That's uh, why I haven't done this yet. And if I do, then I will lose um, the OBS recording. Uh, will be split up. I don't want that. So whatever you change here, this one, um, you need to normally restart your PC. So we're going to look at uh, this being still turned on. But uh, yeah, I might turn it off then after the video. And if, if there is uh, significant differences, I will let you know in the comments. The other thing you should do, he says, is uh, find your uh, flight simulator if it's there yet and uh, it's an app so Microsoft Flight Simulator say add then you go to options and you make sure that not Windows decides <laughs> the performance <laughs> make sure that you decide yourself by saying high performance um, I don't think you need to restart for that one and that uh, gives you the um, yeah hopefully the best options here under Windows. Right. Now, um, you can close this one here. And the next thing, if you have an NVIDIA card, I can only show you this for an NVIDIA card. You have the NVIDIA control panel. You open this one, you go to the global settings and what he re recommends and actually what I do uh, too is I restore to the default settings and I also go and select on the programs um, find your where is it where is it where is it um, um, <laughs> explain yep prepared yep there it is it doesn't have a logo so go to Microsoft Flight Simulator also say restore that means you start from a clean sheet and it also says that it will use all the global settings because then you can go here and do some general settings which will also help with other simulators by the way you can always go to the simulator itself then and make individual changes but um yeah so leave most of these as they are the first important one uh, is and i mentioned it already in the sim is the v-sync so let's find the vertical sync use the 3d application setting yeah you could do that or you do it like me and turn it off so i turned it off because this um this will give you real trouble if it's on at least in FS 2020. But I'm pretty sure it, it also might cause trouble in, in other cases. Right, so then let's go further down here. Power management mode. Optimal power, um, switch this to prefer maximum performance so that we do not, um, not that the NVIDIA system decides to bring down the performance let's make sure that we're always getting maximum performance texture filtering quality um, yeah it's on quality at the moment but it should be put on high performance it's not that you will see a huge difference um, as far as I understand but it will definitely uh, help you towards having a better performance uh, because it will not do unnecessary things with the filtering that's basically what they do threaded optimization that has to be turned off we don't want to have anything interfere uh, and the vsync is off now he also recommends to set the frame rate the max frame rate now that is something that i haven't tried yet um, what he says is that you should put this on 36 frames if you're not a streamer, uh, but not limited if you are a streamer. So wh why is that? Well, if you set it to 36 frames, you will get uh, a maximum, I think, of 35 frames from the simulator. But it, it And I actually use this kind of limitations 
because it will allow your graphic card and your system in general um, to not run at max spec all the time, right? Um, and it, it will just generally should improve the, the situation. If you are streaming with 60 frames per second, then you have a problem because then the OBS or whatever your streaming software might actually um, uh, interfere also with uh, the graphic card and the simulator. And if you are limited to 35 frames or 36 frames, uh, it will take away from those 35 frames. Whereas if you're not limited, at least that's the way I understand it, then uh, it, it kind of uses their, their own frame. You will always get a reduction in frames when you do video recording or streaming, uh, but at least it's not going from a lower um, blocking limit. All right. Okay, so I leave this off for the moment. I might actually use this later on and, 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 and play around with it, but uh, so that's the part in uh, NVIDIA control panel and then make sure that you apply this. And, and that's it, according to Q8 Pilot. And thank you very much, Q8 Pilot, for that. It's always an inspiration watching your videos. Um, let's hope that my system, which is not even close to, <laughs> to Q8 Pilot system, uh, I'm running on an old uh, 1080 Ti. Uh, the PC is okay. It's not. Uh, it's already a couple of years old. I, I, I mean, the years are flying like mad, but uh, it's still pretty good uh, spec. Definitely above the minimum specs of FS twenty twenty. And I do get decent performance because I'm not not a, a performance freak. Yeah, I don't want hundred frames per second stuff like that. I don't run on on uh, on high DPI screens and things like that. So. Um, I'm still running the 1920 by 1080. It's uh, it's very simple. It it is also a compromise for my streaming and video making. Um, so for me, this is all great. And if I get 30 frames, I am happy. If if they're stable, that's me. That's because you don't really need much more than 30 frames to have a decent experience without tearing and all that kind of stuff. So I don't need to be at 60 or 100 frames per second. All right. Okay, so next we need to look at uh, the simulator and for that I will start the simulator. Now, the simulator has started after our settings have been applied and why 147 frames? Yeah, <laughs> let's see what happens when we actually start using the simulator. So um, one of the recommendations of, of Q8 Pilot is to use a really demanding scenario, meaning a demanding aircraft, which the 747, I use the sparky one, seems to be, and also a demanding environment. That means a cityscape of Shanghai Airport uh, in Singapore, because that's one of my most complex sceneries. It's Paver from Orbix, and I think if I can make this scenario work reasonably well with, let's say, around 30 frames per second, I'll be happy as can be because if, if this scenario works, everything else will work as well. So I go on the world map and you can already see <laughs> your, your 140 are, yeah, that's vapor stuff. So we, um, get ourselves the 747. It's the salty simulations. And I'm selecting WSSS for Shanghai, Singapore. And I'll place myself um, on one of the guides, like here, for example, set this departure. And we are saying fly. And that will be very interesting. We can already see that uh, frames tend to drop quite drastically. The color is red. So we shall see. By the way, if you have V-Sync on and you have really abysmal 
performance, what you will see is that your render thread is continuously red. Okay, so if if that's the case, check definitely check the VSync setting. You will have to restart afterwards. Now, with the fact that I turn VSync off in in the NVIDIA, um, I think even if it's accidentally turned on, we should still be okay. Aha! So we're now getting into the kind of frame rate area that I would mm, expect uh, from this scenario, but we haven't rendered yet. The funny thing with this simulator is you're in some menus and you wouldn't think that something takes so much performance away, but this simulator ticks differently. <laughs> so even if you go into the menus, uh, you, you stay on, on abysmal frame rates if they are abysmal before that. In other simulators, if you go to the menu, usually um, the, uh, the load on the CPU eases up. I'm, I'm actually, well, I am impressed. Um. <laughs> okay, it is red, yes, but for me, this kind of red, <laughs> I, I take that any time. So, let's see. Um, let's go into the outside mm -hmm. and let's look around this really demanding airport and city because you have the Orbic cityscape and you can imagine that that is actually not too bad. Let's turn on the 747 though, because at the moment I think the systems are not doing anything. So I'm going to um, activate the main battery and uh, we're going to use the external power. And I'm going to um, externalize the windows because that was one of the biggest frame rate killer that I had so far. Now they are external, okay, and I put them all four out. And the thing is now, because of VSync not being on, I can actually put this like this here, I get all the four displays and uh, I don't really see big issues. I'm quite impressed now because uh, I had expected really abysmal performance, but um, I have to say that is not too bad, not too shabby. Um, maybe we should try something else. Let's uh, let's move. So let's let's go out again and start again. Continue. Let's move to, um, yeah, why remember what I just entered? <laughs> if you can enter it again. It's one of these things that uh, are hard to understand at times. So fly, let's go onto a runway where the view is not obstructed. And then let's see what the performance is like because it depends very much on where the aircraft is positioned and what, what's kind of rendered at the moment. So if we are in front of a building, it could be that there isn't that much uh, being rendered. All right. Yep, it goes down to 30 under certain circumstances, but uh, all in all, not too bad, not too bad. Now let's see. Aha. So and we haven't got uh, external windows yet, so let's do that again, just to make sure and see what happens. Not too bad, not too bad. So I'm, I'm positively impressed because reading all these articles about bad performance and hearing that in videos, I thought, oh my God, here we go again. But that is actually quite good. Uh, and it might have to do with some of the settings that we just applied because I didn't get 45 before. 
I'm reasonably happy at the moment. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to general options. I'm going to the graphics and look at that. VSync is on again. I, I don't understand that. Why is it? But the thing is, it's not working probably because um, I have now forced it off on the NVIDIA level. So it's not going to be used. But you, you see what the problem is? Uh, for some reason, my settings get overwritten. And that is a real pain in the butt. Okay, so um, Q8 Pilot actually gave us a few values that should make a real difference. For example, the terrain level of detail is one of the biggest frame rate uh, eaters um, that you can get. So the higher you set this value, let's uh, try something here. Okay, so I'm going to try this quickly. Yeah, it didn't make that much of a difference. Let's do apply and save. Oh, hang on, we, we haven't been in the simulator yet. Resume. Yeah, so we're now down to, yeah, under 40. So let's put that back. Uh, I think he uses 150. So I'm going to go to roughly 150. Let's try that. Now I have a little uh, note here. So terrain level, yeah, the TAA. Yeah. Super sampling. That's another of these settings that you should uh, have on 4x4 because that makes, uh, that makes the best uh, performance. Then shadow maps and shadows in general, um, try and keep that low. So the terrain shadows and the shadow map. So the shadow map can be put down to um, something like 1500 or 1024 and the terrain shadows um, here you can go down as well. Cube map reflections 128 or even lower as you can see I have stuff like that turned off. Windshield effects turn them off if you don't want them. Bloom I don't like so turn that off. Um, the uh, depth of field that is something that you actually could turn off because it wouldn't make a lot of visual difference as Q8 pilot says and the refresh rates of the glass cockpit should be low. Apply and save. Let's now see what that made. Yeah so we are nicely constantly over 40 frames. So that's me being a happy camper because uh, I don't need more than that from the simulator. Yeah, okay. You can see now that under certain circumstances in areas where there is a lot of uh, objects to be drawn, there can be um, short term Uh -huh. it, it goes down shortly and then it does something and as soon as it's finished what it's doing then the frames go up again but that's nothing that I would be really worried about so I have to say so far I am reasonably happy we stay in and around 30 frames although I haven't limited it and I have to say that is very good I'm really happy with that that's the kind of frame rates that I don't mind having at all. So let's see what happens if I just take off here. So let's see. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I might have to reconnect my rotor pedals again because they don't register for some reason. Keep default. Okay, so now they are registered. Um, and we go back, resume. So flaps are out. We are basically ready for takeoff. And um, I'm going to Yeah, I'm just going to speed brake park. Uh -huh. So the park brake command doesn't really work. Let's do it like this then. 
Why can I not... Uh, what's happening here? Ah, no. Okay, so... Let's... Uh, let's just fly uh, around over Singapore with the with the scenery that I have, this the Singapore cityscape or what it's called, um, it should be quite a demanding scenery. And I shall see in the video how that looks like. Rotate. Positive rate, clear up. 40 frames, I am happy enough with that. Fifty frames. The thing is, the higher you get, um, probably the higher the frames will get because it will draw less objects, especially when you are on cruise level over not inhabited areas. That is probably Okay, so now let's see, um, where's the city? Okay, so the city, we need to turn further. I'm going to, uh, oops. Why, am I, why can't I turn on the flight director now? There we go. Try and find the click spot. Right, come on. Oops, uh, the speed is a little bit on the low side, right? don't really want to go that slow and heading out heading hold there we go so yeah you can see when it points you, you, you get a quick reduction and then yeah looks Okay again. Now that's performance that I like. I'm quite happy with what I see so far. I think we need to go further so that we fly over the city. Now there's one factor that we haven't tried yet and I'm going to try that in a moment and that is I'm going to do bad weather. High level rain, snow, storm, storm. Yeah, and you can see already with clouds uh, things turn bad not only outside but also in the simulator but interestingly it recovers again as soon as we are out of the clouds and all that that's nice that's okay so 47 
Come on. Let's go to rainy weather. Rain. Because obviously rain can be a frame rate eater as well. Hmm, not too bad. In prepared or in FSX, having uh, rain could really uh, make things bad. Well, a few frames uh, due to the clouds. So we're now flying. Are we flying towards the city now, or have I turned too far? Let me see. I th I turned too far. Oops. <laughs> But so far, I'm quite happy with everything I see here. This is a rather complex uh, setup here. Alright, that's good. Um, Fifty frames, wow, no problem whatsoever. And don't forget I'm also recording right now. So not too shabby. <laughs> Okay, now let's try the other possible frame eater, and that is nighttime. I realized that uh, having uh, night lights can be quite demanding. But that looks pretty okay. Very good. Yeah, what can I say? Um, that's quite okay. I'm happy again. Let's see what uh, dusk and dawn do. Apart from looking very good. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's only very short uh, intervals where it would go down a bit. That's when it re-renders or re changes uh, some stuff in the buffers, and as soon as it's, yeah, it, it works again. Cool. Yeah, you can see it, it takes a wee moment where it goes down, and as soon as it's stabilized on a view, um, it stays like that. It's, so we are over 40 frames Right, that's it. Uh, I don't think I need to show you more. Um, this is now hopefully going to be a stable setup and this is now the procedure that I'm going to do uh, every time when there is an update uh, planned. Doing the backup, making sure that all the settings are still as I uh, intend them and uh, that should uh, settle the problem with frame rates uh, for good. I hope. <laughs> Although with flights in 2020, you never know. <laughs> okay, that's it. Thank you very much and until next time.